I'm Jabron, and this is the story of the old white lady on Lakewood Street, which I lived on from maybe 1975, well, 71 until the late 80s in Detroit, Michigan. And this street that I lived on was uh, Lakewood, and a particular part of Lakewood, between Charlevoix and Verner. And this was in probably about 83. And at that time, uh, you know, white flight had left, uh, you know, the east side, southeast side where I live where Lakewood is. Lakewood is like six streets away from the southeast border, if you're south of Mack and Detroit, which it would be Alter Road. And so um, Alter Road, ever since 71, on the other side of Alter Road was all white, right? And then in 71, it was just black people starting to move in and white people was moving out. And then in 75, I guess, we moved down the street. And uh, again, this was in like 83, 84. And the uh, street that I grew up on had a lot of kids that grew up together. Like it was like not a lot of new kids moving in. Like once they moved in, they was there, right? So all the kids from the 70s, when I moved over there, I was like five. So um, in 75, I was um, nine. So all those kids, we all played together on the block. And like across the street, four houses down, there was a yellow brick, uh, two family flat. And upstairs lived a, a older white lady. And I guess her husband might have passed, I don't know. Um, but she lived by herself. Um, and from the time I have been over there, again, since 75, I really maybe didn't pay attention, but I didn't see no kids over there or no white children playing or whatever. Or the her children would have been older than us though. So I guess they were, you know, part of the white flight, you know, I want to stay here, mom, or what have you. So the lady, for whatever reasons, was still there. Um, could be that she couldn't afford to leave, or it could have been like uh, Clint Eastwood in Gran Torino, where he just was staying. As the neighborhood changes, a lot of people that stays in the neighborhood, right? And, uh, you know, it's like those poor white people, they can't move out. They have to be around those black people. And that's what kind of this story is about, right? And so, I mean, it was a lot of kids, right? So in the summertime, I mean, you know, kids playing in the street, um, playing on the street, in the, you know, on sidewalks, um, on, sitting on porches, um, basketball in people's backyard. We had a block club, so they would used to have like swimming pool, the, the swimming mobile, I don't know if you ever had that swim mobile come to your street. Uh, and, you know, so the book mobile, we had a lot of activities because we had a lot of children on our, and our block was composed of a lot of two family, I mean, two parent households, right? It was families with two, you know, a, a husband and a wife, and they was raising the kids, maybe grandma, maybe not grandma, uh, granddad, something like that. Uh, anyway, so uh, one summer, word get around that uh, the old white lady was making ice cream for uh, some of the kids and I had invited them to invite other kids. So that started a thing where we would go over there, all the kids would go over there, you know, all excited. You know, little black kids, nine, eight, seven, six, ten, you know, 
uh, all the way up to like what I guess I was, maybe 13, 14. I had to be like 14. Cause I was like middle school, maybe uh, high school. Anyway, um, she was really nice. She used to make homemade ice cream with the, she had like that wooden thing with the crank on it. And, uh, you know, first time that I actually, I had known of it and I had been to like, um, uh, what's that place? Um, Henry Ford Village. Um, so I had seen that or heard of it, saw it on television or whatever, but never actually, right? And so she used to make some really good ice cream and she had a swimming pool in the backyard. So she used to invite us over to uh, use the pool. It wasn't a broken up swimming pool neither. This was 82. Again, this is like 82, 83, 84. Um, you know, and all the kids love just, you know, go over there. And she was really nice. I mean, she would make us hot dogs. I mean, I guess she was like, don't, you know, she has stuff. Why not, you know, it's just kids, right? And she didn't, maybe she didn't want to be alone. I don't know what the thing was, but we liked it. Um, and p several people did things like that. They had a guy, uh, his stepfather used to, on Wednesday, uh, have Bible study. And then what would make kids, nine, eight, 10, 11, 12, go to Bible study on Wednesday afternoon, you know, like 6.30, Dunkin' Donuts. Used to have a big old thing. She stay for what you call the word, get Dunkin' Donuts. And I'm so grateful for him to even care to get the word. Need more people to do that to with uh, young kid, young children. I mean, it attaches um, something they always remember to something, a product like Dunkin' Donuts. Like, I like Dunkin' Donuts. That reminds me of, of people doing good. So, the lady up and dies. And all the kids in the neighborhood are really sad, right? So, we're sitting on the porch or we're out doing whatever plan, and we notice the, the children who are grown coming to, um, you know, clear out the house or do whatever final things they need to do. Um, and we're kids and we, <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> we're children, but we want to go over and say, our condol give our condolences. So we do that, we go over, right? So it was a bunch of kids, like 10 of us, right? For all black kids, right? And they're white, right? And they never met us before. And this, okay, so we go up, right? And we're saying, cause I don't remember her name now, but I'm sure we were saying her name, right? We were saying her name and how nice she was and all the things that she did. And they were looking like, the, who is these black right I mean and it was really weird because it was almost like they wanted to call us names and, and they shooed us off real you know real quick and I remember going away feeling even as a a, a child whatever I was if I was 14 I was still a child to me um, like hmm right I guess I had, that was the first time where, you know, here's, you know, somebody who was stepping out of their family or the group norm, because I guess normally they don't talk to black people, you know, they tolerate black people because evidently they, they drove through here to go up there. They hadn't, they wasn't scared. They was doing what they were doing. They just don't want to be there. But the mom, maybe she didn't want to be there, but she didn't act like that, right? She was nice. She was really nice. 